All right, let's talk about Taro the Dragon Boy. So this is a Toei movie. Um, so the story is we have this uh, young, fat, lazy kid named Taro who does nothing but eat and sleep and, well, he also goes out and plays with a bunch of animal friends. Um, so, yeah, he's lazy and doesn't uh, get any work done in the village, but uh, I guess nobody really uh, dares uh, make him work anyway because he's already, like, strong enough to wrestle a bear, as they established. So, yeah, he's probably stronger than any of the other vill villagers already. But, uh, yeah, then a Tengu shows up and... Uh, yeah, look up Tengu, T-E-N-G-U, if you want more info. But uh, he shows up and gives him a little potion that he drinks and, you know, makes him even stronger. He's now, like, superhuman. Um, but it only works when he, uh, yeah, it only works when he's helping others. Like, if he's, you know, doing something only for himself, then he becomes weak, I guess. Or, you know, the potion just loses its effect. Um, but uh, that never really comes into play as far as I can recall. Because um, from here on out, he's pretty selfless. So yeah, um, I do appreciate how they, how he goes from lazy and selfish to, you know, selfless and helping everybody. But uh, I don't know, there wasn't really much of a transition between the two uh, character states. Um so yeah, um, little nitpick there, um, but yeah, so <clears throat> first he uh, helps save this girl from this uh, red demon, and uh, apparently the, these characters, like characters like the red demon and the black demon go by different names in Japanese, but again, I watched uh, the English version with uh, the... Uh, who seems to be a regular for English dub young anime boys, Billy Lou Watt. I talked about her a little bit in my Jack and the Beanstalk review. She's the lady I talked about who went on to voice uh, Eustace's mom in Courage the Cowardly Dog. Um, an interesting role, but yeah, back, back in these days, she always voices like young boy protagonists and also various other characters like you know old ladies and stuff um but anyway um like for instance she voiced astro boy and kimba the white lion but anyway um <clears throat> so yeah then he asks his uh, grandmother about uh what happened to his mother and she explains that uh hold on some mysterious thing happened which uh killed his dad so yeah no questions asked about him but uh yeah his uh mother somehow got turned into a dragon and uh yeah that then she had to abandon him and uh so yeah she like lives in a lake far away so yeah he decides to go out and look for her um but along the way he uh hears that the uh, red demon is uh, has kidnapped uh, this girl that he met earlier um, and had to protect her from him but uh, and yeah he goes he confronts him and he reveals that he yeah uh, you know, gave her to the black demon and then he fights the black demon and yeah you'd think the black demon would be the villain of the movie because they build him up at the beginning but yeah he kills him and or, yeah, he's defeated in the first act, and you never hear from him again. So, yeah, there's, uh, from here on out, the, uh, villains he encounters are kind of, uh, you know, smaller, you know, smaller scale, at least. Or, yeah. But anyway, uh, I guess that's not, uh, the conflict of the movie, um, you know. So yeah, it's kind of interesting that the character that looks like he'd be the villain of the movie ends up getting defeated in the first act. But anyway, um, he heads out. He uh, 
And I don't know, he, he, um, uh, he helps this old lady grow, uh, rice patties on her farm, and, uh, yeah, she, uh, she turns out to be, uh, you know, one of those corrupt slave driver types, um, like all of her old workers ran away, but, uh, yeah, she works tarot like a dog. Well, yeah, Taro works for her, but, you know, she bosses him around, and, uh, and then, you know, it's kind of hard to explain all the little details with, I don't know, I feel like, uh, but yeah, it, it, story with helping some, uh, slave driver, farmer lady, um, yeah, there's, uh, yeah, there's a witch, there's some spirits that freeze him and stuff but aside from that um yeah it's mainly about finding his uh dragon mother um and yeah when he finally finds her she reveals that uh while she was pregnant with him um you know she was tasked with uh catching a couple fish for the villagers but she ends up eating all of the fish because she's a pregnant lady, so she's that hungry. And yeah, uh, because of that, she was cursed. She got turned into a dragon. She gave birth to Taro, and that might also explain why Taro was, uh, you know, fat and lazy and wouldn't stop eating and sleeping at the beginning. Um, but yeah. Uh, so. Then they have to uh, destroy these uh, rocks that are blocking the lake from uh, this valley, and because uh, you know he wants to help with the crops or something in the valley below or something. And uh, um, the story tells it a lot better than I'm telling it, I assure you. But uh, so yeah, he gets his mother to uh, yeah. Uh, hit the rocks until they uh, fall and uh, yeah he doesn't uh, seem to be at all aware that she's uh, getting some serious cuts yeah she's getting some serious uh, scars in her skin she's uh, basically dying because uh, I mean it does raise the question couldn't he have just done it himself because I mean he seems strong enough to do it himself um but yeah, instead he gets his mom to do it, and she's, uh, yeah, she's clearly dying, and he's not aware of it, so yeah, that kind of, uh, bothered me a little bit. But yeah, when she, uh, yeah, she's, uh, dying, and he, uh, grieves over her, but then, you know, because of her, yeah, because of her selfless act, um, you know, the gods change her back into a human, and, uh, also there's some, uh, yeah, there's some almost traumatizing imagery of uh, the dragon, like, being so broken up that, uh, or yeah, it, like, it's got a bunch of nasty scars, and you even see it's, like, ribs, and yeah, and then when she changes back into a human, you see the dragon, like, rotting away before, uh, yeah, before Taro discovers her uh, naked body inside, she's back, or yeah, she changes back to a human, and... Uh, and yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, that's the end of the movie. They save the village, blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah, um, I again, I assure you, the story, the movie tells the story a lot better than I do. Um, so yeah, um, overall, this was a really good movie. So yeah, um, this is probably, like, um, some people might uh, debate whether the or, yeah, between, uh, yeah, in terms of uh, Toei's best movies, it's, um, a lot of people would say probably between this one and uh, Horus, Prince of the Sun. Um, I personally like Horus a little more, but still, this one was also great. Um, so, um, let's see, the animation is very nice, uh, the backgrounds are gorgeous, like, yeah, they look a lot like, um, you know, paintings from 
or yeah, Japanese paintings or something. Um, let's see, uh, you know, um, yeah, there's some, uh, some nice character development, even if, uh, you know, uh, Taro's, uh, sudden change into a selfless hero might have been a little sudden, um, um, otherwise I, I probably wouldn't say there's much to the characters, but it is a good story, it's compelling, um, yeah, it is very well told, um, so, yeah, um, and again, there's some, uh, some somewhat, um, trouble, well, in terms of imagery, like, you know, like the dragon getting, uh, you know, banging its head on the rocks constantly until it, uh, it's like a bloody mess, and it, uh, and then you watch it rot away, there's that, and then there is quite a bit of nudity in here, none of it is, like, done in, like, a sexual way or anything, but yeah, there, you do see a lot of, like, little boy genitalia, including Taro's, um, yeah, there's quite a few naked and almost naked kids running around, you know, I guess they're, I guess they didn't, uh, really care about dressing kids up that, that much back in the, yeah, back, back in ancient Japan, um, you know, there's a, there's an old wit, witch that, uh, Taro encounters, and, you know, she's got giant breasts, and, you know, she's got, like, a nipple slip, and I guess it's supposed to be creepy, so, yeah, and then finally, when, uh, Taro's mother changes back to a human, she's naked, and you see almost all of her, you see pretty much everything except her genitals, because, you know, I guess there is kind of a double standard a bit with, uh, Japanese cartoons, where they'll show, uh, boys genitalia, but not, uh, ladies genitalia, you know. Well, anyway, I don't need to keep talking about nudity. Um, just pointing out there's quite a bit of it in this movie. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, there's some good action scenes. Not the best I've ever seen, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's just very well animated and well told, and yeah, for that I think this movie deserves an 8 out of 10, um, so yeah, like I said, I don't like it quite as much as Horace, but, uh, still, it's, it's a very, uh, enjoyable film, um, and, uh, yeah, if you're interested, I'd say definitely check this movie out, um, and, uh, yeah, I, I guess if there's anything else I feel I need to add, I'll put it in the comments, because, uh, I can't really think of anything else significant to say at the moment, but, uh, yeah, overall, great film, um, highly recommend it, so, yeah, I'll leave it at that for now, Mash It and Smash It, signing off.